Hey Brandy, good morning. Look at you hopping on right away. I'm so happy to see you. Good morning, everybody. Happy fall, yay! Wonderful weather we are having here in, um, in Montgomery. I hope wherever you are, it's beautiful fall weather also. This is my favorite time of the year. Um, I, I know everybody has their own cup of tea. Some people like summer because they like the heat and they like beaches and, I mean, I do like spring obviously because that's when all my sweet flowers um, bloom, but there are happy blooming things um, in the fall too. But it's good to see you too, Brandy. I'm happy you're here. I'm happy everybody's here. Um, my name is Laura. Thank you for tuning in. Um, if this is your first time today on Backyard Botanical Art, I'm going to be drawing um, some spider lilies. I cut a couple from my yard. Um, they popped up a little, um, I don't know, I, I would say I started seeing them about a month ago around here, which, you know, in Alabama, they are kind of like the sign of fall, the idea of that season change. Um, so even though it was really, really hot up until like five days ago, <laughs> we knew fall was here because we saw the spider lilies. Um, and so anyway, I thought it'd be a fun way to celebrate this new season, uh, to highlight something that we associate as a very autumn-like uh, flower. And they're fun because, you know, they, uh, they just kind of pop up. Like, that's what I like about them so much. You never really know where you're going to see them. See them on the side of the road. Um, there is this one random open area, kind of like an open lot where nothing has been uh, built on, I think it's Carter Hill, in between like the car wash and before you get to that Publix um, shopping center. And there are like hundreds of the spider lilies in there. I'd love to know if you call them something different. I've heard a lot of different names. Um, I've heard hurricane lilies. Let me think of what else. T type some in the comments if you have a different name for them. The uh, scientific name is Lycoris radiata, and we're going to discuss that just a little bit before we draw. Anybody drawing today? Um, the idea there being, obviously, it's got a um, radial symmetry to the flower, okay? So they are literally radi radiating out from a center point, um, and each little each little flower on there that makes up what we see as the hole from a distance sort of has um, has symmetry and they all look exactly the same, basically. But, and I mean, I definitely get the spider fill. The, when I was doing a little practice for today, um, I, I felt like I was drawing spider legs every single, every single time. Um, I did one of the, one of the anthers and filaments um, Cheryl is, Cheryl is painting. Yay, Cheryl. I cannot wait to see what you do. Cheryl, did I see somewhere maybe on Facebook that these are your favorite flower? I think I did. Tell me if I'm wrong. One other thing, y'all, for today before I get to drawing, um, I wanted to <clears throat> ask you, because I like fall so much, like I said, um, and I was going to get my coffee this morning, my Saturday morning ritual, and I heard a song on the radio that is one of my favorites. Um, it's, it's an Eddie Vedder song from the Into the Wild soundtrack. Really that whole soundtrack is all Eddie Vedder um, and it has the same kind of vibe. That soundtrack for me is very fall and it just kind of always takes me to the to the zone that I like to be in for for this season and this change of weather and the cooler weather. But I was just curious to know about um, everybody watching, whether you are a regular, whether it's your first time, whatever. Um, one question I've always asked is what is your favorite flower? But today I want to know what kind of music do you like to listen to, um, especially at this time of the year? 
Is there anything that particularly makes you feel fall, like ready for change of season? All right. This is what I was playing with um, really early this morning. <laughs> I, I woke up and I was like, I can't sleep, so I'll just have fun and do some drawing. Um, and so this is what I started on this morning. I'm going to redraw, obviously, I'll draw on a fresh sheet. This is not quite complete, but this is just to get a feel for how today would go. Um, before we start, I will say that what I, I learned from doing that is if you have a ruler handy, I would really suggest um, having a ruler, and if you're drawing today, having a ruler for the stem because these stems are just these strikingly long, perfect, um, paralleled lines when you're drawing them. So I normally say just wing it, you know, just go with your quick trust your hand, which I normally do. I, I very rarely um, use rulers, especially when I'm drawing flowers because I like to be loose. But these stems just, I feel like, call for a little structure, a little ruler help. But hey, Kevin, good morning. I'm so glad you're here. Kevin, you're going to um, draw or, or paint some spider lilies this morning? All right, so Cheryl has said that Van Morrison Moondance makes her think of fall. That's great. I like that. I love Van Morrison, particularly Moondance. I could see that. It's got a fall vibe. Anybody else, let me know your thoughts on, on music of what you prefer for fall. Today, um, I've already got my little station taped up here. Uh, there's my coffee. <laughs> and I'm going to have to have it where I've got the, the phone, my camera here. So I'm not going to be able to follow along with comments while I'm drawing and painting today. But what I will do is go back through them after the live stream. And if there's anything that I didn't naturally answer, um, I'll go back in the comments and add the answers. Um, Catherine, you say Bob Dylan gets you in the cooler weather mood. Very nice. I'm really excited you're watching. Y'all, Catherine is is my second cousin? How do we say that? She's my dad's cousin's daughter. So I think that's like second cousin. Cousin once removed? I don't know. <laughs> but that's that's some home Alabama home family right there. So I'm glad you're watching, Catherine. Thank you. And then Brandy McDermott, you like the Halloween soundtrack. Good. Good for you. <laughs> you always have surprises for me. Brandy, I love you so much. All right, so I'm going to pop my camera on here and make sure that my um, view is good for you and we're gonna get going. I'm gonna be working on watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, you can just do a thick paper. Oh, I think that'll be good. <laughs> Y'all, I just realized that you can see, yes, my flowers are in a old tequila bottle. I like to recycle, all right? Let's see here. Do, do, do. And zoom in. That should be good. All right, so I hope everybody can see that. I think I've got it zoomed well. I'll check again in a second. And we are about to get going. All right. I'm going to work with a um, softer lead pencil. We talk about this almost every time, but just in case it's your first time, I like to let you know. When I normally draw, I will use um, a harder lead. So um, it's a, it looks lighter on the paper. Um, I normally do like around a 3H. And when I'm doing these classes, I like to do a darker lead so it's easier for y'all to see. Um, so a softer lead, darker um, line, which is uh, like, I'm gonna use a 3B. That is my preference. All right, before I get going, y'all just wanna let me know in the comments while I'm still looking 
that everything sounds good and you can see well. And that way I will know that you hopefully can see and hear. Like I said, I'm working on a watercolor paper, but if you don't have that, um, really whatever you have is fine. Let's see. All right, and I'm going to start, let's see, get one of these down here. Get it on the screen. If you have one of these in your own yard, it would be great for you to to draw from from real life. That's way better always, right? We prefer drawing from life. All right. I don't have any comments on if you cannot hear or anything, so I'm just assuming we're good and we're gonna go. So when I was doing my practice, which of course I always talk about drawing um, Drawing loose, so trying to keep your hand really loose. Um, yes, we want to be, you know, accurate because we're doing botanical, um, but you don't want to worry about trying to be a perfectionist, which is really hard for me. <laughs> but um, you want to look closely at what you're drawing and then just kind of let yourself see the lines the way that they are. So the the way that these flowers, these petals are, they're almost like, they're very curvy, kind of ruffled, almost like a ruffle ribbon. If you think of those ribbons that have like the little wire on the edges. Um, and then these are just really simple, straight, like scooped or curved lines. So I'm just gonna start um, with, one of the petals just to get us going and the idea of where I want my center to be. Now I'm gonna be off centered because I have this here so y'all can see it also, but I'm gonna work over here. Let me get started. And I'm just drawing loose, curving a little bit. It's very dark, which I don't like that, but um, again, that's better for y'all to see. All right, so again, kind of consider where things might be overlapping, just again, using lines and got my curve of petal. And then each little flower is gonna work with that same idea of, of symmetry, okay? So I'm working from the center out on each one. Double check in, y'all good? Everybody can hear me? All right, perfect. Okay. Let me just have some fun then. If you were drawing along, relax. Like I said, I hope maybe you have some from your yard that you can work with. That's always more fun, right? To get out in nature and enjoy. I'm just making sure that my lines are staying curved because again, that's accurate for the, for the petals. And then for my little anther and filament, the, uh, the reproductive part of the flowers you can, you can kind of, you know, get creative with that. Let's do remember that the artist has their artistic license to um, make their own choices. <laughs> I like to cling to that when I want it to be, <laughs> when I want to make my own choices. All right. I have to say, I don't think I've ever really worked from this angle on this flower before, but this is fun. I'm enjoying it. Draw what you see, not what you know is there. I say that every time, but just because I know that this is connected to something here and they're all going in these different directions, um, I am. this is what I'm honing in on because that's what I'm seeing from my angle. 
If you see something different from your angle, you draw it the way you see it. So one, I've got all those. We do one more back here. Just using simple lines and shapes. Let's see if y'all can still see me. I think I might be off the page a little bit, so I'll move you over. There we go, just in case. If you're just tuning in, um, I let everybody know that my setup today does not allow me to follow along with comments in the moment, but if you, if you want to comment, I will go back and read them afterwards, and I will happily answer in the um, final posts comment section on Facebook. How are we looking? Can y'all see everything okay? Move my flower over a little bit. Hope that doesn't mess you up too much. All right, there's my stem going back. Stem coming up to this one. Like I said, I'm gonna use a ruler to create the idea of where my actual stem is, which is something I don't normally do. But the stem on these is so straight and um, basically really well structured. And so I don't want to lose that with the way that I like to draw loose. So I'm using an actual ruler today to create my, my stem. Might have gotten a little too wide, but I can fix that. Something to think about with these specifically is when you do look at it, yes, we're looking closely, but if you take that moment to step back, I think like we all should when we're making art, right? Um, when you take that moment to step back, you do just see the red and it's just like a bunch of different ribbons. Um, so just have fun drawing the petals. Just curved lines, kind of like ruffles, like I said earlier. And when you're making um, these additions, just let it swoop. They really are just kind of like little spider legs. So just relax and have fun. I say, says the perfectionist. <laughs> relax and have fun. Do, do as I say, not as I do. I was also thinking these kind of look like um, strips of bacon. <laughs> and it could just be that I'm really hungry, y'all. But tell me this does not look like some well-cooked bacon to you. That's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm choosing to see right now, okay? Bacon. Too much more into it. I feel like that's pretty accurate rendering. Let me see if I can fix my stem a little bit because I think I got too wide. So I'm just going to erase it. Or one side of it anyway. I 
and come in a little bit more. But I want to keep this line parallel to the other side of the stem. So because again, it's a very, very straight, kind of structured seaming stem, which is why I'm using the ruler. There we go. Anybody else drawing along? I know Cheryl said she was. Let me know how y'all are doing. I'm about to switch to paint, to watercolors. I think I'm gonna do one more. We've got this little guy right here who's hanging down and I want that to be represented in my drawing. So I'm going to add that right here. It's coming from this one. And then one more back here also, if y'all can see that. Hanging down, doop, right there, that little guy. Curving under, I really like that, and I don't wanna lose it. I could draw petals all day long, y'all. All right, let's move to paints if y'all are ready. Milton, good morning. Um, I'm checking my comments occasionally. I'm, I'm not looking directly at the camera. I see that you asked what these are called. Um, these are commonly, I know them as spider lilies. <clears throat> spider lilies, excuse me. Um, the Latin name is Lycoris radiata. And we discussed that um, earlier about the idea of it having radial symmetry. So it all comes out from the center point, literally radiates from the center um, and creates this kind of circular uh, symmetry from the center point, like a starfish or a spider. <laughs> all right, so I'm using watercolors to paint with today. I am specifically, um, those who have watched before, I like to do a combination. I am not a snob about what types of paints I use. So the red I'm gonna be working with today is um, actually Target brand. And it is a fire, fire hydrant red. The greens I'm gonna be working with, um, also Target brand just because I really like these colors. And, and they're really, I mean, quality watercolor um, substance-wise too, and, and their pigment is really, is really nice. Uh, this one's called Ivy, it's the darker green, and this is a caterpillar. And then I'm pulling in um, for my shadows. I really love to use a Prussian blue. So I've got um, a Prussian and my yellow um, is just gonna be a cad yellow and that'll be for the areas of any indicated pollen on these guys here. All right, we ready to paint? I already prepped my watercolors, um, so I am working from my egg carton. I've added water already, but if you need a moment to do so, go right ahead. I'll make sure we are on picture together again. There we go. All right. So I'm working in this one little tiny corner, but I'm doing that with purpose. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm gonna sip some coffee. All right, so since these petals are so ruffly and loose themselves, kind of wild, honestly, um, I'm going to do um, a wet, uh, wet paint on wet paper technique, so wet on wet. Um, and currently I'm actually using what I would normally use for acrylics, 
but I like it because it's got such a fine um, bristle to it and it's it's so narrow and that is what I'm wanting to have more control in these spaces so here I'm kind of doing an oxymoron I said I want to be loose with the paint color but I'm gonna be <laughs> I'm gonna be controlling with the paint I can't let go of being a perfectionist y'all all right so I'm taking clean water and just I'm gonna go back to my vision again we're all different people yours is not going to look like mine that is okay we draw differently we see things differently and I'm just gonna kind of work pedal by pedal because that's what I like to do that works for me Feeling right now like I have a little bit too much water, so I'm gonna take a little bit off right here on my paper towel and just go right back over what I did, soak it back up into my brush. I just want the idea of the color there right now. I'm not looking to do any real definition yet. And I want it to be very subtle. That is me. Yet again, if you want yours to be super bold and red already, you go right ahead. I'm not making your painting your. All right, so taking more water, go into the next, getting the feel for where, kind of where I want my focus is to be. I still have red on my brush, so I'm kind of staining as I go. Um, not enough water. With a flower like this, I um, my personal focus would be picking a few petals that I want to stand out. I want to be the focal point. I'm not going to try to make every single petal perfect, believe it or not. <laughs> um, there we go. There's some red. This one down here was really important to me, so I want to make sure that I make it stand out. While I am just painting y'all, I will tell you that we have um, some upcoming programs at the museum, some virtual things to keep in mind and tune in for. Um, as you know, we do this, I do botanical art the first Saturday of every month. And next Saturday, a week from today, we have a local artist live, um, which will feature Sakia Evans. So that's October 10th, Saturday, October 10th, right here on Instagram. And what that will be is from 10 to 10.30, Sakia, who, who now lives in Montgomery, um, she's originally from Michigan. Uh, she is going to talk a little bit about her art, um, which she, she works in several different art forms. She's a really interesting, talented artist. So you're definitely gonna wanna tune in for that. Um, this, Coming Wednesday, we have a Creative Conversations, which is something that um, airs on Facebook Live. And that's, let's see, Wednesday, October 7th is when that is. And that one is going to be um, Whimsy in the Garden, um, featuring Patrick Doherty. So if you have seen the Sculpture Garden lately at the museum, um, 
right before COVID really hit, right before we all had to go into quarantine back in the spring, um, Patrick was here working with a group of volunteers to um, create this gorgeous, really cool, natural kind of structure that you can like walk into and all made from like twigs and, and limbs and really cool stuff. Um, so anyway, he'll be talking about that. And that's on Facebook Live. If you don't have Facebook, um, everything that we do after it airs is posted on our website and, um, and on YouTube. And so uh, mmfa.org, you can always go there to check for programs that have already happened. But that's another one that'll be a lot of fun. And that is at uh, 5.30, I think it's 5.30 to 6.30 on Wednesday with Patrick Doherty. How's our painting going? Everybody having fun? I'm kind of just enjoying myself. You'll notice I'm keeping some areas really light um, because that is accurately depicting the, the petals. They, we think of them as like these big pops of red in the fall, right? But if you look closely, they actually do have some subtle areas that are a little closer to pink, a little lighter in their tint um, versus the darker reds on the edges. So I'm trying to keep that accurate. I don't, I don't enjoy that I can't see y'all. I'm gonna work this out for next time, okay? For next botanical art. I like knowing what you're thinking. I like talking to you. I have so enjoyed being able to still share my love of nature with people during this time. But gosh, do I miss teaching in studio, y'all. <laughs> I miss it so much. I miss people. I'm glad you're here. I guess that's what I'm, what I'm getting to is thank you for being here. All right, so right here where I'm working, I just added that darker um, red. And what I'm gonna do is take a clean brush with just a little bit of damp water on it and I'm gonna kind of spread that out a little bit, let that blend a little better. It's a really subtle touch, but it makes such a difference in helping it feel like it is curving. Stopping to look at my screen, I see that my sweet Whitney has joined. Good morning, Whitney. Are you drawing or painting today? Happy fall. Again, if you've just joined, um, <clears throat> the way I've got my setup today, I can't follow along with comments immediately, but what I'm going to do is review the comments after the live stream is done, and I will put answers to any comments um, in the final... Um, the final rendition of, of this broadcast. My colleague Steven is amazing and what he does after we do these live streams <clears throat> is he goes and downloads them and rebrands them to the museum's branding and they look all pretty. So, all right, so what I'm doing is I just painted clean water all over this section, this whole petal, and I'm coming back with the, with the red on my brush and just kind of painting it in. Oh, good morning to Jordan too then. Thank y'all for watching. All right, let's see. I think I'm missing a little there, so let me add some more color. I know Cheryl's painting along. Cheryl, I'm gonna wanna see what you do for sure, as always. 
right, clean water, painting it in, and then getting a little red. Maybe <laughs> not enough red. Let me get some more. <clears throat> there we go. I love how watercolor flows. I want that one to be a little bit darker, so I'm going to come back with a little stronger red. I was talking about some programs later this week that we have airing, you know, we're trying to stay engaged as much as possible while, while we still need to be virtual. Um, you can always check our website, which we've recently had a website renovation, so please go check it out. Um, but mmfa.org, we have a calendar there, a programmatic calendar that'll let you know anything we've got going on and it's at least a few months out, so you can plan accordingly. I will please, um, I'll tell you and ask you to please go check out my, my artist friends. Um, we just, yesterday, put out a call for proposals for um, what we're calling the Community Togetherness Project. And this is something that is being funded by uh, Wells Fargo. And the concept um, is responding to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and the experience, um, the, what you have been through, what community members have been through, what your family has been through. Um, and the idea of coming together as a community to respond, to reflect and respond. Um, so there will be two awards, one for two artists who are working collaboratively to uh, propose a sculpture that will be temporarily installed in the sculpture garden at the museum. And another for a pair of artists who are working collaboratively um, on a uh, temporary removable mural um, in the sculpture garden area in the education courtyard, which is that space right outside of where you walk into the museum, that gorgeous bricked area. But anyway, that is up on our website also. So look up Community Togetherness Project on our website. Get together with, with a friend and um, submit your proposal. I know we've got a lot of amazing artists in Montgomery. That is the whole point. We want your, we want your engagement. We wanna see what you create. All right. I'm really enjoying this, but I do think I could go a little bit darker. So I think I'm just gonna keep layering some red on. Um, I do also need to get red out here and obviously green down here. So I've got about 20 minutes left. I'll go ahead and do the green <clears throat> so we can get it. You know, red and green are complementary colors. They are opposite each other on the color wheel, so they really pop. Um, they look really good next to each other. Saying they pop isn't necessarily, that's not a technical term. <laughs> Um, I am not putting any water down. I'm just going to do a direct um, paint on dry paper for this. And again, I am using for the green Target watercolors. It's nothing extra fancy. And this is the Caterpillar green. It's a really, really pretty soft kind of um, yellow green, kind of a, kind of like a grass stain, if you will. to keep the idea of creating a little bit of um, implied or visual depth here, I'm gonna have one side a little darker, just the same as it is on the actual stem. To create that idea of, of a little bit more shadow up in here, I'm gonna use some of my Prussian blue. Like I said before, it's one of my favorite blues to work with. 
Um, it's a very versatile color. I'm gonna put just a little bit in here where that dark green is and bring it down just a little bit. Not a lot. And then come back with my other green right on top of that. Blend it in. So the reason I did that for now, one other than to help it feel more complete, <laughs> to help me feel like I was getting somewhere, um, but also because I want that to dry before I add the red on here. So I'm gonna work now on my spider legs coming out, out here. And that's just gonna be red and then a little bit of yellow. Again, just where, where the idea of that pollen would be. <clears throat> So because I wanna have more control with these, I am not going to add any water first, and I'm just taking paint. I'm checking comments. Yes, Milton, that does sound dope, and I hope, <laughs> I hope to see you um, thinking about at least submitting a proposal. Check it out, please, please, please. Y'all, this is where a steady hand comes in for sure. Don't stress yourself out, try to relax. It really helps, let me show you one, that one trick that I like to do. Let me see if I can get this on here. You can see that, awesome. What I like to do when I wanna work and make a really fine point is I like to put my brush in the paint and then pull it up with the paint on it and twist it and pull it out. So I'm pulling and twisting at the same time. So I'm creating a, a really fine tip on the brush as I um, get the paint on it. And that helps me be able to do then a really fine line. Oh, I think my phone had paused. Hopefully it wasn't paused too long. I hope you're all good and you can still see me. What I was just saying was that when I get in the process, um, I get a little too focused. I stopped talking. <laughs> Maybe you prefer that though. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, Milton, the, uh, the egg carton is a trick that I learned in a watercolor class. Um, in college and it is one of the few things because I hate throwing away egg cartons because you know we go through eggs really quickly um, in my household Flora loves eggs which I think is wonderful um, but then you've got this it's such a cool um, container so yeah we try to think of ways to use them and whoops 
this is one of them. So I just made a little bit of a mess up right here. I'll show you if you work fast enough. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. Rinse, 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 rinse. Clean brush, a little bit of water on it. And I'm gonna come back and just try to get that to go away a little bit. It might not go away completely, but I can kind of fix it. That's better. All right, keep working. I've switched angles a little bit. I hope I'm not messing up the camera view. When you've got your paper taped, you can't turn the paper, so you have to move your move your body. Let's see. There we go. All right. I think I got everybody. I'm gonna go back and just darken up a little bit of these spaces. So I'm just taking red right on top of it. If you think about in the middle, it's gonna look a little bit darker where more petals are together. And I am just using the red. I'm just layering red today. Red is bold enough on its own. And I want to blend that out a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, like I said earlier, I'm gonna clean my brush a little bit to where it's still damp, but not dripping. And I'm just gonna come between those a little bit and blend it in. All right. I want this to be a little darker because it's folded in, so I feel like that's more of a shadowy area. And really anywhere you see, if you look at your flower and then look at your drawing and painting, anywhere that you see that you feel like isn't defined quite the way that you want it to be. Go back and add a little more. To darken it up. All right, let's switch. We've got about 10 minutes left. Instagram liked to cut me off about an hour or a minute early. They say you get a full hour, it's like 59 minutes. So to get my yellow on here, let's see. And again, I'm just working with a with a CAD, CAD yellow, um, medium. I'm going to get a fair amount of paint, which is not normally how you want to work with watercolors. Um, or not normally how I work with watercolors anyway, but I am doing that so that I can just touch these really easily, but get a lot of color on them. If you're thinking about background, that's really up to you. I, I tend to just do um, my flower or my plant or my fruit, whatever it is that I'm working on. 
I don't do as much background wise. I also have a thing for cutting out paintings or drawings after I have created them. Um, but since I've got this taped off, I will add a background. I think I might play with the idea of some reds and greens for the idea of, of more spider lilies in here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just do get my whole get the whole background um, with water on it and do a wet on wet to let it be kind of abstracted in the background. All right. How are we feeling? Everybody good? I'm gonna do the background now. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit for that. Excuse my hand. Doop, doop, doop. There we are. All right, so because I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna take a little bit of a bigger brush and I'm just gonna take clean water. Make sure my paper's clean. Paint it in. Start with here so it doesn't dry up while I'm trying to work. I'm going to indicate the idea of another spider lily that's maybe farther back here so it's a lot smaller. Just play with some reds. So I'm not drawing it, I'm just kind of using the color to kind of indicate it. And then up here where I've got it wet already, I'm gonna play with just some greens. I just looked at the comments. Thank you, Brandy, that's so kind of you. I'm glad you were here this morning. I miss seeing you, but it's nice to see you through, through Instagram. So really, I'm just kind of playing with some organic shapes. I don't want it to be too defined. I want it to be kind of fun back here. I am pulling in some darker greens too. Or you can do blue. Let's see what I can come up with. Excuse me, I sneezed. <laughs> How are we doing? We having fun? I'm having fun. I hope you're having fun. I'm going to create a little bit of brown to indicate the idea of trees back there. I tend to see these in, even though they're everywhere, um, I do a lot of forest stuff. So do some brown for some trunks. If you want to know how to make brown, if you're not sure about making brown, um, you just want to, it's all three primary colors, so red, yellow, and blue. Um, or you can look at it as mixing two complementary colors, so like red and green, kind of creating the idea of a, of a neutral.
That might take away from my focal a little bit. Maybe it wasn't the best choice, but I'm playing. I'm having fun with y'all. I hope you're having fun too. Thank you again for being here. Just kind of spread that out a little bit, get some more green on. We're almost out of time. But I've enjoyed y'all so much. Like I said, I'm gonna go back and check the comments. Hope everybody has a wonderful weekend, wonderful Saturday. Here we go. And thank you all for being here. Dropping my brush, y'all. <laughs>